It's time to kick up your life with Master Mel. You can be the hero, you can get the gold. Breaking all the records we thought never could be broke. Learn how to optimize your business and your life with Master Melody Meyer as she speaks with thought leaders, athletes, entrepreneurs, and high achievers to discover their secrets of success. Master Mel uses her experience in martial arts, nutrition, fitness, and psychology to help you kick it up to the next level of mastery in your life. And now, here's your host, Master Mel. All right. Hi, and welcome to Kick Up Your Life with Master Mel. I am Melody Meyer, and I'm so excited to share with you a very, very special person. Now, uh, this, uh, yes, this is Sarah. Sarah, uh, the Eagle Woman, uh, she's called. She's known by many as the urban shaman, one who practices the ancient ways, bringing them to life to heal and transform in today's world. She's described by those who have experienced her work as a miracle worker, as a holy woman, and the doctor of the soul. A mystic and a visionary of impeccable discernment, she is the embodiment of integrity and devotion. Here she is, Sarah. Welcome so much to Kick Up Your Life. Thank you, Melody. It's great to be with you. It's great to be with everyone and all to share. And thank you for having me on, Melody. Well, I'm so excited because I have so many different kinds of people on this show. And, um, but, you know, my interests are on, on a very spiritual level. And to have someone with um, your, you know, innate gifts and with your calling that you have in this world, to have you here to be able to talk about that and how it translates into our modern world, I'm really excited for this time together. Thank you. And I'd say that we pretty much need the urban shamanism here in this day and age, and especially with everything that's going on in the world. It's nice to invoke the ancient healing practices in the modern day societies. It's, uh, yeah. it's needed. Yeah. So thank you because you're so right. I work with people all the time. I work with a lot of entrepreneurs that are always, you know, that are on that fast track that are trying to, you know, um, be successful to do their very best. You know, they want to take care of their families. They want to build their businesses and their networks and all of that. And, you know, trying to find balance and trying to find um, the reason and the why behind all of that to create more value and uh, to create success on another level is sometimes really challenging when, you know, when we're at that pace. Exactly. Very much so. So it's like what I say is I bring the mountain to you. So ah. rather than going up to the mountain, because many people can't take the time away or like you said, fast track, fast pace, they want a quick fix. Truly, that's what most people want, a quick miracle. Right. <laughs> give, give me the goods. Give me the um, the mojo so that I can get on with my life and do. So a long time ago, it came to me that it's important to bring the mountain mm. to the city. And that's why it's urban shamanism, because it truly is about teaching a way of life, teaching, giving tools so that you can practice it on a daily basis and implement it into your life and whatever you're doing, whoever, all walks of life can benefit from shamanism. And um, I love to teach it. I love to um, facilitate in the ways of uh, working, so. Oh, good. So there's two things I would like to do in this time together, if that's, if that's all right. What I'd like to do is I'd like to get some of those ideas from you on how um, how you work with people and how you bring that how someone could bring that into their life. So so someone listening to this today could actually learn some tools that they can start using in their life right away. Because I'm a real practical gal. I love those tools that we can start integrating right away. Does that sound good? Absolutely. Good. We'll do that. And um, and right before we do that, what I'd like to do is sort of get a little. Uh, get to know you a little bit better, maybe understand how this all happened, how it is that you started doing this and being in this kind of work, um, how that all began for you. Can we do that? Absolutely. I love to share how it came about. Well, actually, 
I was born this way. Um, even when I was just a very, very small child, when I was three years old, I used to, when I could speak, I would tell my mother that I would see, I would see certain people, I would see certain things around me, and she thought, uh oh, you know, we, what, we're in trouble here. What are you, what are you talking about? What's this about? But she spoke to one of my elders, my one of my uncles, who our lineage. I have Apache blood running through me. Uh, and also it's like I'm a, a mixed breed, but I love and I respect and honor the ways of the Native American traditions and to invoke them into the shamanism, which is universal. Shamanism is universal. It's about reaching out from every different types of modality across the ancient ancestors, philosophies, uh, healing, medicine ways. I love to bring it all into what I do, the work. But ever since I was young, I used to always um, be able to see in the spirit world. You know, um, the veil was lifted and I would communicate with spirit all the time since very young. So as I got older, um, it became stronger. And we call it, I call it my power. And when my power would speak to me, whether it be the universal consciousness, creator, um, use in whatever power we want to, we want to put the name on it. Um, I have a council of elders and the council of elders are all around. So when I'm doing my practice, I'm in communication with them. So I speak to the council. And when I started doing uh, kickboxing karate with my husband, Jet, um, he had me teaching, you know, it's kind of like, here, you start teaching and I would start teaching. And when I had done one with a student, I would put my hands on them and I could actually see a soul grid of what I understand it to be now as a soul grid. So I would put my hands on them and I could see everything about the person. I could see what was hurting them. I could see their past, present, and even in tapping into the future. So I thought, this was pretty amazing. And as I would work, my hands were guided to work on certain areas of the body. And the student would say, oh, my goodness, I've had a pain there for so long. How did you know to go in that area? And I said, well, my hands are guiding me, and I'm also being guided of where it is and what it is that I need to do with you to transmute it, to uproot it. And then it became even more, it's stronger, where my power was showing me the internal, these emotions about a person. It was showing me um, what they carried in from, from before they came here, before they were born. And then they started to show me what was actually causing dis-ease in the person or what was affecting them emotionally, even financially. So it opened up. And my gifts that I have, that I would say that I have, are the gifts of discernment, which I can see beyond the physical and tap in to a person's soul grid, which we all have soul grids. And each person has a different soul grid. It's like your thumbprint. We all have a different thumbprint. It's the same thing with the soul grids. And when I tap into it, I can actually see different movements and and working with the soul grid is working in a very subtle way because what's happening in your soul grid manifests into your physical body. So the physical body will hold the ailments, will hold the disease, will hold whatever it is that's happening in the soul grid. So if I can transmute and heal what's happening in your soul grid before it enters into your physical, then that is a win-win situation. And there are people that come to me that are already have disease of the mind, body, or spirit. It's already in the physical body. So my work is now concentrated on hands-on healing in the physical body. But it's, it's even amazing to me to, to what I'm guided to do with a person's soul. Because the soul carries so much history so much of past reference points that when you start to, I'm like a electrician, 
you know, it's like I'm rewiring and I'm pulling and shifting. And, and when I see a blackout, then I know we have to put more light in that area. Or if I see the wires are crossed, then we have to uncross them. So there's a lot going on when you come to see me. Um, so I have my hands on you, yes, but they're also I'm working in a very subtle. My soul is communicating with your soul, plus the masters, the guardians, the council of elders, are very much involved. In fact, I just follow their guidance. I follow their lead, and I'll tell you, they're my employers. <laughs> they're the ones who say, "Okay, this is what you need to do with them." And and it's very fascinating, and it's uh, amazing to see that it's right on. It's um, on point of what I'm guided to do with the person, and then. I share the tools. Okay, I've cleared it. I've cleansed you. I've done a, a cleansing, a soul cleansing, a spiritual cleansing, a mental, um, physical cleansing. Now, these are your tools. Take them out into the world and practice. Keep practicing, practicing. So I have many clients that return. They don't just come one time. They'll return because as we go out in the world, there's layers of consciousness. There's layers upon layers. And then when we are in association with another person, when we come in contact when, with our loved ones, with friends, society, whatever, the world consciousness, and all of a sudden it's like you take it on. You know, it's, it's been proven scientifically that we actually take on a person's energy and also we give out energy. So... You know, it's, it's interesting, too, because people, and I say that people can actually make you sick. You know, like mm -hmm. uh, somebody came to me the other day and they said, I'm really feeling nauseous. I'm feeling sick. And then I walked into her husband and I said, well, of course you are. This is, what happened. this is what's happening with your husband. And you can actually be sick by, you can, you know, be as, Sick by association, by what you're taking into your psyche, what you're taking into your physical body, your energy field. It's all encompassed. So my work and my job is to clear and to move and shift. And then once you're clear, okay, let's do the work. So all in a nutshell. Wow. That's awesome. So why don't we talk about some of those things, some of those practical tools that um, you were mentioning earlier about how it is you help someone get that clear and help them work through their, their issues in their soul grid. Well, um, it, it's coming to me to share about, I just had a client who has very panic attacks. Um, I've known this client for years and the first time that he came to see me, I he, we healed it, we cleared it, and he was good to go. 15 years later, it comes back to revisit him. Mm -hmm. So after clearing and moving it through, it, it what I found, it had, there was an association to when he was a child, yes. But once we cut that association to that childhood memory, then he's free to move forward in, I call it the medicine wheel. So it's moving forward in the medicine wheel and it's being in the becoming. So if you can envision, visualize that you're in a circle, a sacred healing circle. And when you're walking the circle, you're actually relinquishing all of the past. It's like you're dropping all of the robes of negativity, of the past reference points. You keep walking that circle and then what you do is you invoke the breath medicine. A big part of my work, and when you come to experience me, you'll experience what we call the eagle breath medicine. It's the shaman way. It came to me a long time ago. It was invoked in me to use the breath medicine. And in a lot of different cultures, uh, the breath, of course, you know, is very important. Breath is medicine. And breath connects us to each other and then back up to creative creation. So in the way of using breath medicine, I would ask the client from three fingers below the belly button to pull this breath, one sweeping breath, all the way up 
And as you exhale it out through your mouth, you're connecting up to this infinite circle of life. And as this infinite circle of life, I call it the weaving process. It weaves back inside of you. And with your back nice and tall, your spine is nice and tall, and you're sitting and you're just visualizing that you're connecting up to creator creation, to source, to the universal consciousness, what name you feel comfortable putting on this breath medicine. And as you continue to breathe, Something so amazing takes place to where you are connecting up to source, which is bigger and more expansive than the panic attack, than the disease, than anything that is of the linear, that is coming through of density. It bypasses it. And it takes you to that remembrance of even before you came here, that we are spirit first. We are soul first before we came into this physical conduit. So immediately the soul connects to this breath and connects up to source. And before you know it, you're moving. There's a synergy. Mm. And if you can imagine the figure eight symbol, which is the infinity symbol, and you're at one end of the symbol, one end of the eight, and the and creator source is on the other. And if you intertwine with the figure eight, you're actually moving the consciousness through you in this in this way. It's very subtle, but it's very effective. So it's the breath that connects us, the breath medicine. Once I, I want to share this, I had an emergency where I had to be rushed to the hospital. It was a near-death experience. And as I was in the emergency room, waiting for the doctor, I had a moment to be able to connect up with source. And I remember I went into my meditation and I saw the council right there in front of me. And I asked them, is it my time? Is it time to cross? And they said, no, connect up to us though. Connect up with your breath. And so I said, okay. And they had me actually move my body forward as if I was going into their circle into their sacred space and then moving back into my beingness and i started to feel revived i started to feel like i was coming back coming back to this earth plane coming back into my beingness it was so powerful i'll never forget that that happened about i'd say five years ago when they came and did this invocation and said teach this because it calms the spirit and it also reminds you where you came from and it connects to our ancestors, to our loved ones. It's an amazing um, transformation. It's an amazing movement to do. The breath is powerful. Yeah. What, what had happened to you? Well, I was getting prepared for a colonoscopy and the doctor, I'm, I have got such a sensitive system. And for good reason, because I am the tool of creators. So if you come to me, I do my work definitely with integrity and honor. I mean, I don't smoke. I don't drink. I don't. Um, I'm very clean living. Everything has to be. I have a great responsibility for you, for the world. So my system's so clean. I was preparing for this colonos colonoscopy, and the doctor had me take... Um, I think dual, dual X or whatever it's called, but he wanted me to take it every hour and plus drink lots of water. So I was drinking this water and all of a sudden I felt like my body was just expanding and it came to find out I had water toxicity, which I knew something was happening to me. And I told Benny, call, um, call the ambulance. I have to go to the hospital. I just knew that something was definitely not right. So the ambulance came, they took me, but the doctor discovered that it was definitely, I drank too much water and that my body was just starting to, you know, um, respond in that way. So thank goodness I was guided to say, call that ambulance and get the, get me over to the ER, you know, because uh -huh. you have to, you know, also, I love that Western and Eastern medicines work together. You know, you respect the ways of the medical of Eastern and Western, when you bring them together, 
and the indigenous ways. And what I love is that, thank God that I have the ability to hear and to have the intuition to move on the situation and be, you know, push towards that way of get her to the hospital now. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. I'm grateful for this. Oh, good, good. Well, I want to come back to some more tools, but you mentioned something earlier about um, training, and I wanted to talk to you a little bit about martial arts. Hi. And um, so um, you are married to Benny the Jet. How did you guys meet? Well, we met through my brothers. My mother I wanted to put them into karate. I have four brothers, and three of them were very interested in taking the martial arts. So my mother looked up where the best martial arts the instructors were in the valley, San Fernando Valley, and found the Yukitas brothers. And so she said, we're going to go to this place. It was the YMCA in San Fernando. I'll never forget. And my brothers, my mother took them. And my brothers were, they were so cute because at the time they were like playing um, matchmaker. And mind you, I was only 15 years old. And here they're saying, oh, you've got to meet our instructor. Oh, my God, he's the best. He's so amazing. So I said, okay. So I went with them one day uh, to class. And there he was, Mr. Casanova, I call him, because <laughs> he was Mr. Popular, and especially with the women. And it's like, he, he's actually four years older than me. So he was already, you know, real Rico Suave. <laughs> to me. And he... Um, he said, hello, my name is Sensei Benny. And I said, oh, hello, very soft spoken. And he took my hand and he kissed my hand. And I thought, oh my goodness. <laughs> and so I said, I don't know, you know, and all the girls, Benny, Sensei, Sensei. And I said, okay, I know what type of guy he is. And so that was that. And we left it at that. And my brothers continued taking martial arts. Then Benny got into a really bad um, motorcycle accident with his brother, Adam. And so my brothers were like, you've got to come with us. You've got to come and wish, you know, come and, and, and talk to him. You've got this ability to heal. Come on, come with us. So I said, okay, sure. I'll go. So we go to their house and there he is again, women all around the bed. They're looking in and, oh, Benny, this and that. So I said, okay, I've got my work cut out for me. So then we had a moment to ourselves and as i just because with my work what i do is i don't touch a person unless somebody says can you help me so you're not allowed to do any of that so i just sat there and healing light. finally he pulled me in and he kissed me on the lips and i'm like what oh my God. look at him and so i pushed him away and i said no and He's like, oh, come on, you know, I'm really, and I said, no, no, no. And I told my mom, let's go. I don't want to be here. And so she took us home and I was like, I can't believe him. And to tell you the truth, I really didn't like him at first because it was more, I didn't like his reputation. I didn't like, you know, the way he was until he proved himself to where he would come to our house. And when he was in that situation, he had a cane you know, to walk with. And he left his cane at the door to just to show that he was there. And back then we didn't have cell phones or anything, but um, he would come and, and just want to gradually just more and more, he started showing up and he was more and more there. Finally, I said, okay, let me just give this guy a chance. But my mother was so strict. I had to wait, of course, until I was older, like 16 and a half, 17. And finally I was allowed to date him. But um, I've known him since, yes, since I was 15 years old. And then he proposed. And my mother said, you're not going to marry him. And I said, why? And she said, because, you know, he's, um, look at him. He's just like a tough guy. And he's this and that. I, he's like James Dean. You know, he's a rebel without a cause. And I said, no, I, I see something deeper inside of him. I just see something. And so we got married. And we got married, let's see, it was like two weeks after I graduated from high school. <laughs> and then 
um, we went on our honeymoon. It was his first time that he fought full um, full contact, actually. And so, on your honeymoon? Yes, we went. Not with you. Yeah, no, <laughs> we went to Hawaii, and that's when he fought his first um, professional full contact karate fight. So it was all, you know, it was kind of like it was all together. It all happened all at once, and we decided to make the honeymoon out of it. But it was pretty amazing. Yeah, the champion. So did did you train in martial arts? Absolutely. It was like when Benny said to me when I met him, he said, you know, you got you to gotta keep up with this. This is a fighting family. This is a martial arts family. And, you know, you got to keep up. you got to be a runner to keep up with me. So get involved. Now, he couldn't teach me because we were too close. And I would get mad at him all the time because he told me to do something. And I didn't want to do it. And I'd be stubborn. So my teacher was his brother, Ruben. God rest his soul, who's now on the other side. But he's he was my sensei. And then I wanted to learn kickboxing. And so Lily, my sister-in-law, she was my sensei. So it was actually Ruben and Lynn and Lily. Ruben and Lily were my teachers. And I loved it. I was having such a great time before I knew it. I was I got my black belt, you know, it took some time because they don't just give black belts out, but it took a while to get it. And then in March, in the kickboxing, I became really good at it and I started to teach. And I, I taught kickboxing for a long time. I still teach um, and I'm still involved in the arts, very much so. I love the arts. One of my favorite was I used to teach for D.A.R.E. Um, so after school program, and I used to teach children, um, high risk children and, um, anger management. I still do. I work with a lot of the youth, my husband and I, we both do. And we work with the children that come from, um, you know, poverty stricken, uh, communities and we bring them in and teach them and love them and show them, a, um, a different way of life. And so that was really rewarding for me because I used to love and I remember teaching these real tough kids in D.A.R.E. in the D.A.R.E. program. They were really tough. And there I was, you know, um, by myself teaching them. And finally, I got a hand. I just understood where they were coming from and understood. And before you knew it, I was able to teach them and they were able to listen and respect what I was teaching because, there's, you know, you just go deeper. You know, into, you go into their souls, you go into their psyche to see what is really causing this anger. Why are you so upset? Why are you so angry at society, at your parents? So it's, um, it was very rewarding to see, and it still is. So what did training do for you? Oh, training. Besides, besides bringing a husband. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, training. Well, I was able to better understand my husband's um, philosophies. I was better uh, table under because he's a world class champion, and so I was able to understand the arts and the kickboxing. Um, that it's not brutal. That it's um, there's so much. It's it's a way of life, and um, just to see and to be involved with it. It's it's so healing. It's, it's another modality of healing the soul. Can you give me an example of that? Uh, that's interesting. Mind, body, spirit connection. We have a way, what we, in our system, Yukitokan, we teach internal training. So it's really about getting deep in. And like with my husband, he teaches the internal training, the art of war, which is all the emotion, um, the physical, mental, spiritual warfare. And because I'm intuitive, I go right in there. And my husband says that I'm chiseling. You know, as I'm working with the student, they're actually receiving this light information. They're, they're receiving this energy that is actually transforming them as we're sparring. And so it's, again, done in a subtle way, but it's so effective. And to repetitious we have a formula like with kickboxing there's a formula like with yoga they have like five different um kriyas that you do well in our system we have five different ways or um, techniques 
And it's fascinating because it's actually you do these te techniques and you go into a meditation as you're working. Of course, you're very much in your awareness so you don't get hit, but it's something happens. You know, there's a transformation that's taking place and there's a threat in front of you because where there's no threat in front of you, then it's just hitting a bag or you're not able to release, get, you know, uh, move the emotions through. So when we put a threat in front of you, then you have to be in your utmost awareness. Then you have to be, to move the anger through you. And it's fascinating to see because we get a lot of angry people that come to our dojo. And we welcome it. It's like one time I asked my husband, is there a sign over our door that says, angry people, please apply here or come on in. And because we would get all these angry. But it was fascinating because it's spirit creators sent these people to us so that they can transform this anger and it's done in the way that movement it's like the energy inner energy in motion energy that moves through and we're able to facilitate it and transform the anger the sadness the depression the fear most people are angry because they fear they have a lot of fear that's through my experience I understand that the anger comes from not being able to express how and not being able to be understood and not being understood. And so it is about suppressing too. you know, there's suppression that takes place. So that's depression. So it's fascinating to see the internal awareness internal. It's not just kicking and punching. It really isn't not kicking and punching. It's exercising the soul. It, I believe it's exercising the soul because you've got a lot in there and it needs to come out. You've got to heal that soul. And the modality is kicking and punching, is your awareness, is your breath medicine. But something so amazing takes place. Some people think that it's violent or that martial arts or kickboxing, oh, I don't want to do that. I've had the most feminine women say to me, oh, are you kidding me? It's so brutal. I don't want to do that. But yet, I invite them to class. We invite them. And unbelievable. They're the first ones to go at it. I mean, we they go out after our um, higher ranked senseis and they're like, oh, all this aggression and all this, I gotta get, and it's like, oh, you seemed very peaceful, <laughs> but look at you, you know, you got a lot in there. And it's really a great release. You need a release. Yeah. And what better way that, to have a threat in front of you, as we call it, but it's really your opponent. And um, it's not like we're gonna let you go wailing at each other. Of course, you use your technique and um, everything moves. It's energy in motion. It's, it's amazing. So I see how you use it as you use all of your gifts to help other people. What I would love to hear is how it has helped you. So not just as a tool that you've used, but how has it helped in your own personal life? It has helped me to have more tolerance patience of a saint <laughs> um it's helped me to um to not be reactive mm. it's not to be reactive you know it's just like a tool if somebody cuts me off on the free or it's like you have this inner peace that says oh okay just let him go by you know you don't have to yell back at him or get upset Although sometimes I still do, but at least <laughs> I have my tools to remind me that I don't have to be, um, I don't have to be reactive. Mm. I can be responsive, yes, but not reactive in the way that I don't have to come on that same level of consciousness that they're coming at. Because we can't heal if we're coming at it at the same level of consciousness of which it's being brought to us if it's in a lower level so the healing has to come from a higher perception the ego perception mm -hmm. so somebody in this situation it's taught me to to be able to see it from an ego's perception everything and um how life is and um to really have discernment about situations but i love the, that the martial arts has brought a calmness 
to my soul, a peacefulness, mm -hmm. and has taught me also to be in my awareness. Um, I've had incidents where I was actually, I'm thinking of one, where I was in a parking lot, underground parking lot, and I was by myself. And when I, what I'm, what I, the martial arts has helped me to be so much in my awareness, but not in my fear. So I remember just looking around. You, I'm always looking around to, to discern what is around me, what's, who's around me. And I remember that particular day that it was very quiet. I remember the energy felt really odd. It felt quieter than quiet. There was uncomfortableness. So I reached for the, my car handle and I felt this hand grab me, my shoulder. And the hand was, it was pretty heavy. So I knew that it was a man. And when I turned, there was this man that said, give me your purse. And when I turned, I remember it was more responsive, not reactive. But I remember palming him to the chest, kicking him in the groins, and he fled. And I still had my purse. I jumped in my car. I didn't look back to see if he was coming back for more. And I drove away. But it's just, I've had other situations to where I was attacked. And it's just, everything just moves so quick. I didn't have time to think. And that has been what my training, you know, has the repetitious training. It comes where if I would have went into panic mode or if I would have went into a reactive or fear, I might have not been able to react the way I did so quickly. I might have been hurt. So it's just about being so much in your awareness. And um, that's, you know, the martial arts has given me that training of confidence, mm -hmm. to have the confidence, knowing I could do it, even though I've never tried it. It's just the confidence to know. It's not that I'm going around looking for somebody uh, to attack me or looking for somebody to, to fight with me. It's hey, you use your discernment, discretion, and you just make sure if, there's, if you feel like there's something negative going over there, you just go the other way. Or you don't, uh, and, you know, you don't attract it or, or you don't go after it. It's just right. making sure you're, you're in your awareness. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great idea. The idea, the idea that, that you have, have to you. train your body and your mind together and then how you've mixed in all the soul work with it as well. It creates like such a, for me, an image of a really balanced three-dimensional um, uh, life that uh, where you can be more confident, where you can be more in your, your power and your, um, and, and, and be calm, like you mentioned, where you're not in fear all the time, but you can actually just be in your life and enjoy your life and know that you can take care of yourself. Absolutely. And also listening to your inner voice, that one voice that tells you, move to the left, don't go to the right. You know, mm -hmm. And it's worked for me in many situations where you really listen to the voice within, listen to that divine guidance that saying, you know, um, no, make this turn or don't. And when you don't listen, those are the times when you've gone, in, I've gone into situations where I said, oh gosh, I should have listened to my higher voice. I should have listened to my inner voice. You know, it's that way. But martial arts is a great tool to have as a foundation. Kickboxing, martial arts is a great tool to have to practice, you know, practice, keep practicing um, so that you become more aware. And, and fearless in the way that you're confident. And confidence also distracts um, negativity because when a woman especially is holding herself with such confidence, there's something, um, I've experienced that myself, so I speak on that, is that, I can speak on it, is that when you're with men and all of a sudden they see that, oh, she's not a weak, she doesn't have this energy that she's projecting out that she's weak. She actually feels like a warrior. She feels something about her. I don't know what it is. She's a mystery. And you want to give that. You want to give that, um, exude that, that there's something about this woman. I don't know. She may have a gun. She may have a weapon. She may have something. But I don't think I want to um, engage. Right. So 
really holding yourself with confidence and trusting this confidence within. That is so beautiful. Thank you and for sharing that. And still looking good. And still, <laughs> <laughs> and still being totally feminine. That's and totally right. a woman. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. And and you touched on something that um, I speak about all the time, and that is the idea that martial arts is not about fi uh, fighting and violence. It's really about stopping that fight and about um, it's a, a, a way of training uh, so that on many levels, not just the physical level. And I just love how you've been able to bring in, you know, all your spiritual gifts into uh, and with your martial arts and use them all together and it becomes so martial arts becomes a tool um and a way of expressing those gifts rather than uh, them being separate you know people see like a a fighter uh be on one end of the spectrum and like a monk uh meditating to be on the other end of the spectrum and what you do and even when i spoke with benny as well is bringing the two of those together that is it's the it's that warrior monk you know that and and as a woman it's that warrior woman who is totally in her power but the power is not physical only the power is um, internal and spiritual in nature and it just manifests physically it's absolutely you know, I have to say, too, the martial arts is what brought out my gifts even stronger because uh -huh. I was able to um, practice. And, and I, it made my – it brought my intuition, my gifts, my, my healing gifts. Um, it was like the foundation that made it even stronger to where I felt it. I felt it evolving even more so, these gifts. And with women, I feel that it's important to have this subtle – strength within you know it's not, i see so many women and i feel so bad when i see these women because they're representing us and how they speak so yet they want peace you know i think to myself some i recognize these women that say oh i want peace in the world the world is so violent all this but yet the, what comes out of their mouth mm -hmm. and especially the women that use the F word so much, I have to really say, speak about this because, because I can see energy, because I can see beyond the physical. When someone is using that word, especially a woman, it, they no longer are in their sacred holiness, but there's something, there's actually black tar that comes out of the mouth of a person who continues to use that. And then I look around them in their force field and there's all this black murky energy that is accumulated from because of the words because words create when you speak it so it shall be when you think it so it shall be and it's it disheartens me to see that if they could only catch themselves that's another form of being in your awareness is speak eloquently speak beautifully and don't use those words i mean it's that word is invokes a lot of demon demons and entities i know this because i'm constantly removing it from those that come to see me and there's attachments to negative energies and plus think about this it's a collective consciousness you put it out into the world those negative words and you put it out with the negative thoughts it's a collective consciousness and then we ask and we wonder why the world is the way that it is. We wonder. Well, yeah. so much of it is because we're a collective consciousness and we're att attributing to that. So that's violence. Yeah. That's violent. Not martial arts. Martial arts will clean up your act. <laughs> <laughs> clean up there your you mouth. <laughs> I like that. I like that. So, you know what? I've gotten a couple of great and practical um, tips from you so far. One that I got, of course, was the breath and working with the breath, which is also very cleansing. And then the second one that I've really gotten um, as well here is uh, the use of words and the power of words and what that can mean um, energetically. Have you got any other uh, little practical things that we can start bringing into our awareness? 
Yes, I love this one, is really listen to the vibration underneath a person's words. Mm. And I think this very often because if you're listening to the vibration, actually it helps you evolve stronger in your intuition and you become an eagle. That's my medicine. His eagle is always to see things and elevate and to bring raise the bar for yourself in any situation. And if you're listening to a person's vibration under their words, then you can really hear what they're really saying. Because words are words and people go numb to words. But if you close your eyes and you listen to the vibration with discernment, free from judgment and criticism, then there's a understanding. I, I call it the light of understanding. You can really hear beyond the words. And there's something so incredible because then you can hear their heart and then you can invoke, invoke compassion. And there's something, ah, okay, I understand why that person is angry because I can hear it in their vibration or they're sad. Or, but it helps you to develop your intuition so strong to where you understand from an eagle's perception. So that's, I love that tool. Yeah. How did you get the name Eagle Woman? Is, oh, that well, happen? that's my spirit name, which yes. means messenger from creator. And um, it's interesting because I was given the name from a Blackfoot medicine woman. She actually dreamt me. And we're very good friends with Chief Willie Big Bull, who is of the Blackfoot Nation out in Brockett, Canada. And he's in the martial arts, by the way, too. In fact, uh, Sensei Benny has gone to the reservation and done uh, seminars there in Brockett, Canada. And Willie Big Bull... Um, Elsa, the medicine woman, spoke to Willie Bigwell and said, I've been dreaming this woman. I've been dreaming her and dreaming her, and she needs to come forth and get her name. And so he said, oh, that's Sarah. Sarah Yukitas, that's my sensei's wife. And so she described what I look like, and she told her she needs to come forth and get her name. So uh, my sister-in-law and I, in fact, Lily, we were both invited to the reservation in Canada, and we had both. We actually went through ceremony. We stayed on the reservation. We stayed in a teepee, and oh, it was the most amazing ceremony. We actually um, four days. We had to um, fast. We went into sweat. We did so many amazing rituals, and. Then the elders would say, okay, we want to see what you teach. And so Lily, she would teach martial arts to them. She taught the martial arts to all the women on the reservation. There was, wow. there was a lot of women, um, over 100 that she taught. Wow. Then, um, that's what her gift that we gave, she gave. And then they asked what I would like to offer. So... At that time, I was always into physical. I loved doing the aerobic type of energy. And so I would do a lot of the aerobic walking, you know, moving the body, running. And so uh, these women weren't very active. We were, <laughs> they were, they were very used to just sitting and talking and they were, you know, they were happy that way. So to move them, my sister-in-law would sometimes, she was so cute because she'd say, when I was really into it and so much energy, she would go, hey, now. Yeah. <laughs> Look at them. They're overweight. What are you doing? But we gave these gifts to them, and then Elsa took us through a ceremony in front of the uh, community, in front of all those the tribal members, in front of the chief, and it was this huge ceremony to receive our names. And then um, we were given the name, and I remember you. This it was amazing because she's this little medicine woman tiny and I went first and she took me in the, in the center and she spoke spoke Blackfoot and she put her hand on my back and I could feel this power come through her hand that was so strong and when she announced my name Vitake, Vitake, in Blackfoot she just pressed me slightly and I went across the room I thought, oh, this woman is powerful. But what she was doing was invoking, she invoked the name, my spirit name, Eagle Woman, into me, which was so strong. 
when I turned around to look at my sister-in-law, because she was next, and she's pretty, um, she, you know, she's pretty big, you know, she's a boxer, she's a fighter, so her shoulders are very broad. And she looked at me, and she was like, uh, suspicious about what took place. Yeah. And then it was her turn. And so I said, I went back to where she was, and I said, oh, Lily, wait till she touches you. She's got some great, there's this power within her. And she said, she's not going to push me. And I said, okay, we'll see. <laughs> and she put her hand on the back. And my sister-in-law's name is Many Buffalo Stones Woman, which is a very powerful name as well. So she put her hand on her back. And then all of a sudden, she invoked her name. And the same thing. And it was like, oh, my goodness. I started to chuckle because I said, see, Lily? <laughs> lady. That little woman has such power. Mm -hmm. and it was just an amazing experience to be able to be given our names. And from that day forth, um, you could really feel the transformation. You could feel when we came home, we were just like, we were all on cloud nine the whole time, but you could feel how it was moving through us. And then it's like my third eye, my heart just exploded open and more information would come down. It was channeled through, and then the work began. It started. Wow. Yeah, that's that was beautiful. a long time. So that's how I received my name, and that is what I live up to as the Eagle Woman. <laughs> wow! Thank you so much for sharing that. That's amazing. It sounds like how long ago was that? Well, let's see. I was thirty-two, and I'm sixty now. So. Um, I don't know. You do the math. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like to think about those. Yeah, right? Right? Yeah. Forget I asked that question. Keep going. As long as my body's strong, my mind's strong, my butt, I feel good. Hey, we don't count the numbers. <laughs> you look amazing, by the way. Amazing. All right. Well, you know what? Our time is coming to a close here. Unfortunately, I could talk to you forever. I just enjoyed getting to know you so much better. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. How can people reach you and um, continue learning more about all the things that you teach? Well, I do have a website and um, let's see. It's so funny because I don't remember it offhand. My assistant, Nancy, always does I, that. I know. I know it. It's, okay. um, it's Sarah Eagle Woman dot com, dot com actually. Thank you. Uh, Sarah without an H. S A R A Eagle Woman dot com is, uh, is your website. And it's a very, very nice website. It talks about your different services that you have, the different things that you do, and really your philosophy that both you and Sensei Bene uh, live up to. So um, it's a very nice site, actually. Thank you. And it's been such a pleasure and joy to be with you today. Mel, thank you so much for calling upon me. And I truly bless you with my love and all the mm -hmm. listeners. I am doing a transmission of a light and a prayer. As everyone is listening, they shall feel the eagle medicine come through their hearts. Mm -hmm. With much love and honor. Thank you. Thank, you. thank you. Blessings to you as well. Thank, thank you. you. Take care. I hope. Okay. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to Kick Up Your Life with Master Mel. Each week, learn how to optimize your business and your life with Master Melody Meyer as she speaks with thought leaders, athletes, entrepreneurs, and high achievers to discover their secrets of success. Kick Up Your Life with Master Mel every week right here on Radio Star Worldwide.